In this lecture, I am going to explain about EPS and ROE. So EPS is earning per share and ROE is the return on equity. So these are the most important terms that we use in the corporation. So by the end of uh, this lecture that you will be able to understand the meaning of ROE and EPS and what is the share outstanding and what will be the effect of earning per share by change in net income and number of share outstanding. So this is this comes under the financial statement analysis. So what is the return on equity? So return on equity is a measure of company's annual return divided by the value of its total shareholder equity that will be expressed as a percentage. So it gives the investor an idea of how effectively a company's management is using the money invested in it to produce some profit. So why the investors will be having interest in this ratios, right, in a return on equity? Because the investor have invested money and have become the shareholders of the company, right? They want to know like the money they have invested, whether the company is using this money appropriately or not. So return on equity that always will be calculated in the form of percentage. So here ROE means return on equity. Net income is equal to profit minus a preferred dividend. So what is the profit? The profit will be the sales minus all kind of expenditure, whether operating or non-operating expenditure. And after even a taxes, that uh, the net income will be calculated. Once the net income is calculated, that we will deduct the preferred dividend. What is the preferred dividend? Preferred dividend is a dividend which is given to the preferred shareholders. Right? And preferred shareholders are the shareholders that they don't have voting right, but they have they will be given as the preferences at the time of liquidation of the firm, and their money will be given at the first. And average shareholder equity, what is the meaning of this? It means equity at the starting of the year plus equity at the end of the year divided by two. So in this case, that way we will be able to calculate the average shareholder equity. Now formula is here, return on common shareholder equity is equal to profit minus preferred dividends divided by average common shareholder equity, right? So the answer will be return on equity in percentage. So I'm just going to explain this one example. Let's say RJ Corporation have a profit of $60,000 and preferred dividend is 12,000. Equity at the beginning is 575,000 equity at the end is $615,000. So now calculate return on equity. So return on equity can be calculated by this formula that we have mentioned. So profit minus preferred dividend. So profit is a 60,000 minus a preferred dividend is a $12,000. Divide by the equity at the beginning plus equity at the end and divide by two. So that will be the average common shareholders equity. So $48,000 divided by $595,000, 8.07%, that will be the ROE for the company. So that is the return on equity. Means returns mean the profit. How much the company have earned by using the money of the shareholders. Means the money which is in the form of equity. Now what is the meaning of share outstanding? Share outstanding are the shares of the company that have been issued and are held by the shareholders. In other words, outstandings are all the shares of the corporation that have been authorized, issued and purchased by investor and held by them. So now, the next term is very important terms that is used in the corporation. That is the earning per share in dollar. So that will be calculated in dollar per share. So earning per share is the net income divided by weighted average number of common shareholders or common shares issues. So I'm just going to explain with one example, earning per share in dollar amount. Let's say net income is $100,000 and all these expenditure are 90,000 and the net income that we have here 10,000. So sale minus expenditure is equal to profit. So sale is 100,000 less cost of goods sold uh, 60,000 
ऑपरेटिंग एक्सपेंडिचर में भी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड मार्केटिंग एक्सपेंडिचर ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड नॉन ऑपरेटिंग एक्सपेंसिस इंटरेस्ट एंड टैक्सेस टेन थाउजेंड प्रेफर्ड डिविडेंड पेमेंट एट थाउजेंड द टोटल इज नाइन्टी थाउजेंड सो द रिमेनिंग अमाउंट इज द नेट इनकम टेन थाउजेंड डॉलर वेटेड एवरेज नंबर ऑफ कॉमन शेयर सम टाइम दैट कंपनी इशू शेयर एट द बिगनिंग ऑफ द पीरियड लाइक एंड लेटर ऑन दे शेयर आफ्टर फोर मंथ्स दे इशू सिक्स थाउजेंड शेयर्स एंड दैट विल बी फॉर द एट मंथ्स means till 31st of december so now how we can calculate the average for a one year one year so one year average can be calculated like this so it 3000 multiplied by 4 months and 6000 multiplied by 8 months the total will be 60000 dollar in this case divided by 12 and that will be 5000 dollar shares in numbers so 10000 dollar divided by 5000 shares That is equal to two dollar per share. That will be earning per share. So in this way, that we have calculated EPS. Next, EPS means earning per share can increase or decrease. So earning per share can increase if there is the increase in the profit. Obviously, if the profit is increasing, earning per share will increase. But on the other side, if the profit is decreasing, earning per share will decrease. earning per share can be increased when there is a reverse share split there is a share split term that you use in the corporation what is the split split means for example 2 is to 1 2 is to 1 means those shareholders having one share will get two share this is split split means that dividing one share denomination into number of denominations right for example someone is having a uh, uh, one share and company is ready to provide five shares this is also 5 is to 1 that is known as the split when the number of shares decrease then what happen that there will be increase in the earning per share and if there will be a decrease in the payment of the preferred dividend again the profit will increase if the profit will increase then earning per share will increase on the other side <coughs> share split will decrease the earning per share and share dividends also decrease the earning per share if more and more dividend will be distributed among the shareholder it mean more expenditures are there more expenses less profit less profit mean less earning per share or issuing shares issuing shares means number of shares have increased so when the number of share has increased earning per share will decrease and also if there is there will be an increase in the payment of a preferred dividend again there will be decrease in the earning per share so what will be the effect of this right so effect of this will be if the profit is increasing the earnings per earning per share will also increase if the profit decrease earning per share decrease and split of share means like issuing of share means 2 is to 1 means Get two hundred shares if someone is having hundred shares. So this is known as a split. In this case, number of share has increased. When the number of share has increased, right? It means the earning per share will decrease. There is the inverse relationship between these two. And a reverse share split means the those uh, people having a two shares will get a one share. For example, that. someone can get 100 share if for example they will be having 200 shares means less of that so that is the reverse share split so in this case number of share definitely will decrease and earning per share will increase i would like to make this uh, this example and uh, by just uh, making some modification in the number of shares and the profit and what will be the effect of earning per share that i'm just going to explain in microsoft excel right now so look at this for example exactly the same example that you can see here so let's say we have here sale is uh, 100000 dollar so if the sale is here then uh, we have some expenditure and this is uh, the net profit and divide by number of shares and this is 2 right so 2 is earning per share let's say that if in case instead of a preferred dividend payment it is 1000 dollar instead of 8000 what happened that that net profit has increased 
So in this way, the earning per share has increased. So seventeen thousand dollar divided by divided by five thousand, right? So in this way, it has increased. On the other side, if for example, uh, instead of nine thousand, eight thousand is nine thousand. Now, so the profit has decreased. Profit has decreased. Earning per share decreased. Right, so there is a, this is the one case. This is the direct relationship between the profit and earning per share. If increases, one increases, other will increase. One decrease, other decrease. The profit decreases. Let's say this is the profit nine thousand. Now I'm just what I'm going to do. I'm just uh, instead of writing this, I'm just writing ten thousand. Now profit has decreased. Earning per share has decreased. Right. Okay, so I'm just going to make it eight thousand dollars. Right. Now let's say the number of shares in any case, whether the split of share or a reverse uh, share split. In any cases, if the number of shares is changing, again there will be effect on the earning per share, because ten thousand dollar divided by five thousand is equal to two. If this is four thousand, definitely this will change. Let's say that earning uh, number of share holding that I am going to decrease. If number of share decrease. That earning per share increase. If number of share increase from five thousand to six thousand, earning per share decrease. It's a very simple. It's an inverse relationship between these two, like number of share and earning per share. Okay. So now I have just made. A, a, I have tried to uh, understand all these concept and what will be the effect of earning per share. So what we have learned today. today we have learned about what is the meaning of return on equity then earning per share and share outstanding and also we have understood the effect of earning per share by change in the net income and number of share holdings or share outstanding